A seven-year effort by Republicans to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, was put to bed, for now at least. So, Chris wanted to take a minute and reset and ask, what does this vote mean? Where does Obamacare stand right now? How do we fix the health care issues still out there in this country? So, Chris, I present you the hardest story of your life. Good luck. I don't want to watch this. See you, Janet. Thank you very much. We take hard and crush it into simplicity dust. We add a little water and we give you an easy to digest pill that hopefully is this report. Let's start with earlier this morning, the vote. The entirety of this seven year effort to repeal rested on the vote of Senator John McCain in this very moment. Mr. Peters. No. No. More drama than Shakespeare. But now as the as this was going on, the Congressional Budget Office threw out a quick analysis looking at what would happen if this passed, if McCain voted yes. And the House passed it and the president signed it. Check this out. Buried in the footnote, it says that premiums for policies in the non-group market, we're talking about for folks who don't get insurance through work, would increase 20% every year over the next decade. 20% every year. But it didn't pass, so forget that. So where does this leave us? President Trump responded with, let Obamacare implode. But will it? Let's look at the individual market, where 7% of Americans buy their plans. First, the bad news. Insurers have been leaving. They've been leaving that market. Too much money spent on the sick. Not enough going in by the sick. Money lost equals bad business. United, Humana, Aetna, all pulled out, or mostly pulled out of that business. Medica is the last remaining insurer offering plans in the Iowa market. The entire state only one left. The Kaiser Family Foundation estimates that next year, 38 counties in three states will not have a single insurer offering plans in the Obamacare exchange. That means an estimated 25,000 Americans will not have access to insurance that they can afford. They are stuck. So where does this leave us? Now the good news. A new Kaiser report, looking at the first quarter of this year, says things may not be that bad, that they're actually stabilizing in that market because premiums went up. The report says profit margins are starting to come up too. Where there's profit, there's business. And where some companies have pulled out, maybe others like Centene, who announced it's expanding its coverage areas, will come back. So maybe it's not failing. But still, we got, we got problems. President Obama promised his plan would reduce premiums for families by 2,500 bucks a year. Haven't seen that. Premiums went up on average 25% in states that offer the exchange. The cheapest marketplace plans, the bronze plans, have an average deductible of $6,000. That's six grand before insurance even kicks in. So where does this leave us? Problems exist. What's next? Republicans, Senator John McCain and Senator Ron Johnson have already pointed to this. Maybe just go back to boring old committees hearings and input from the entire Congress, a problem for all with a solution from all. What a concept. You there want you those two guys to do it? You're back. <laughs> well, they mentioned that they would, and, and um, I don't think working together seems like such a bad deal. It's like political left, political right, whatever. Nobody wants to pay a ton of money for drugs, okay? I mean, nobody wants access to the health care. So if you don't agree on the option, like which path to take, that's fine. We agree about the finish line. Do we? We don't agree on anything. I would also Get advocate, covered. invite doctors, invite her insurance companies, because somebody's getting paid here. And at the end of the day, those people want to keep getting paid what they have been paid. And I think that's dangerous.